to the Tech for Good podcast. This is the HR Tech for Good. And I am joined today by the dynamic duo, Yana Tipa and Anna Kaiser. How are you today, ladies? <laughs> Fine. Thanks for inviting us. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and you guys are the co-founders of Tandem Ploy. Yeah, we are not only the co-founders, but also the co-CEOs because we're sharing, <laughs> sharing that position for eight years now. <laughs> Wow. Um, okay, let's get into it. How do you make decisions if uh, on co-CEOs? How does that work? It's like a married couple, you know. <laughs> so I am. My, my wife is my business partner. So, <laughs> so you know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, like, because I, I come up with loads of ideas and she shoots them down or then she executes the one that she <laughs> thinks is good. Actually, ex yeah, every one of us is having sweet sounds and we know about them and we use them in the right, I would say in the right, at the right time, in the right way. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way of not answering the question. <laughs> so let's start at the beginning then. Um, how'd you guys meet? When did you decide to go into business? And what Excellent. did you originally set out to change in the world? Yeah, Anna and me, we met in our former job. So we were colleagues in a recruitment agency in Berlin uh, at, in 2012, 2013. And yeah, our daily job was to recruit talent for young tech companies, um, mostly in Germany at that time. And one day I got a, there was a really funny and also weird moment. I had to staff a leading position for one of our customers. And I got a job sharing a tandem application for that. So two people sent me a common application, like a common picture, common cover letter, um, also linked to an elevator pitch where they pitched why they are the jack of all trades for that position. And it was uh, made me really curious to hear more about that concept. Yeah. So of course, I invited those two uh, ladies for an interview. And I was so convinced afterwards about that concept of job sharing that I had to share uh, what I heard in that interview with someone and I ran out of the room and ran into Anna like that was a coincidence she was my colleague um, we didn't know each other very well but I told her all about that interview and we both got really excited yeah. because we saw like a concrete solution for making work especially in leading positions um, more complex tasks like more flexible more life friendly and so we so we started, this is where it all started. We Interesting. <laughs> so like in that moment, I'd be thinking, are these people going to be self-employed or employed by a company? And how does that affect like things? What, what, what was the initial structure that you were looking at in terms of attracting people? And then are they contractors then? Or how does that? Yeah, typically job sharers are employed. It's just a, like a kind of a part-time contract. And of course, we were looking that concept up. We were looking for um, like uh, frameworks um, that were, all, were already there, laws. And that was not the problem at all. We just realized that companies were not using that working model as a strategic thing yeah. to change the way we work, to change like inflexible structures. So we both Googled uh, the concept of job sharing the same evening. I remember that very, very well and uh, quit our jobs two days later, right, Anna? Yeah, we met in our home office four weeks later than and started because we said it's really important that we create um, a platform, uh, an official platform where the yeah. people can meet a little bit like online dating, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know, for the job in that case. So, yeah, actually, we started four weeks, weeks later working on the algorithm uh, that should bring the people together and that should meet the people later on. So it was qu quite a, gr a great summer, I would say. <laughs> Tell me, who's the, who's the technical person to be working on an algorithm? <laughs> None of us. <laughs> so we were working on the, the, the conceptual thing behind that and then we were looking for uh, a CTO, a person to code everything we had in mind. <laughs> wow. This is a wing and a prayer. This... <laughs> And okay, so let, let's fast forward a little bit. You you get some form of an MVP together. Did you get money at that stage or are you out in the cold? 
Well, actually, we started our first version of the platform in 2014, uh, Jana, right? Mm -hmm. When Rico, our CTO, joined um, after we created the theoretical stuff and we had kind of a plan how we want to start. So Rico joined our team and we, we started the official platform. And at that time, actually, we, find we had uh, money um, still from university because we had kind of a, you know, entrepreneurship scholarship. So from the German um, government, it was yeah, yeah. from yeah. the government. And, and you, you guys go to uni until you're like 30 in Germany, don't you? <laughs> right. like it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's like, I'm going to uni. Thing. I'll see you, you know, when I'm middle aged. <laughs> That's true. And that was the I'm great doing, thing. No. <laughs> um, no, actually, you can have this scholarship when you're, I don't know, even five years out of university. Right. So what a from, great country. From the state, it's really great because it's, it's a really nice thing to start a company when you don't have, you know, you don't know a lot about the market yet. And mm -hmm. you have like an MVP idea, but you're not sure if it's working. So it's the best program um, to start with. And that's sure. what we did. And when we started in 2014, it was incredible because the thing what we expected actually happened. Um, many, many people signed in on our platform from different areas like project management, IT, marketing, sales, all those areas you normally have problems finding a flexible job or part-time jobs, right? Yeah. So it was great. Most of them, like over 90% had an academic background. So for sure for the companies, it was, there were, I mean, these people were really interesting. So it was kind of then they start recruiting via our platform and winning this tandems and potential job sharers to work in their companies. But after a while, Jana, well, actually, then we moved on. It was 2015. We were part of the Microsoft Accelerator program. So it's like for startups, you have accelerator. Oh, how program. did you get accepted to that? Well, actually, <laughs> that's a funny, kind of a funny story. <laughs> because Jana, yeah, it's, this is probably nice to, to find out how Jana and I sometimes split up because she's doing all the writing stuff when it comes to write, write things because she's so good in it. And always when we had to do application for programs or whatever, um, Jana was doing the applications. And I was at a party in Berlin at this rooftop, really great view to the, um, you know, uh, Unter den Linden is like one of the biggest and nicest uh, uh, streets in, in, in Berlin. And I was asking the, the startups, they're like, how did you get those office space? This is, in, this is incredible. Well, and they said, well, it's an accelerator program. You can also apply. And I went back to Jana and said, Jana, you should do, we should do this application because the rooftop is great. We could work there in the summer. It's awesome. And actually, we didn't exactly know what we were, were doing. But uh, yeah. A couple of months later, Jana, they called us, right? They called us. And of course, we had to do all the application steps. Um, and at the end, we were accepted among the eight startups who could move in there out of, I think, 500 applications from all over the world. So that was pretty nice. <laughs> and of course, we had to make up, some, make up some reason why we were interested. No, of course, we also liked the program because um, obviously it was really cool to sit in that tech accelerator. So, so you guys uh, you decided to put in an application. What was the competition like to get into a Microsoft accelerator? What did it feel like? <laughs> actually it felt quite good and we didn't really look at the competition at that point of time we just felt that it was a good match not only because of the rooftop terrace <laughs> but because of course Microsoft is working very hard on um, productivity tools tools that make the workspace more collaborative and this uh, fits perfectly to our vision obviously so I think this was the reason why they accepted us in the end nice. and chose us to be part of that accelerator program yeah and did and you that, have to give up anything to get into that? No. No. Oh, wow. Yeah, they just... got, yeah they, they, it was like a three-month program, and we got server space of Microsoft Azure for free. So it was great. And it was wow. the three months they help you actually to raise money um, and to work on your pitches and stuff like that. And you can uh -huh. talk to lawyers, and et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's quite cool. And we, Jana, can you remember we even met... Um, Satya Nadella that time and it was awesome how he actually liked our tool 
Yeah, it was cool because that was exactly the time of our pivot. So the time we were sitting at the Microsoft Accelerator, many big companies approached us and told us that they love what we are doing with the open job sharing platform, but that they were um, that they would prefer to have something like that, an algorithm to match people within their companies, ah. to match people for job sharing, mentoring, projects, etc. All these kinds of new work and collaboration. So but you just wouldn't internally. have had access. You wouldn't have had access to all that market intel unless you did that program. Mm -hmm. So valuable, eh? <laughs> yeah, it was the time where 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 um, companies approached us, and we just while while we were sitting there, we listened. And we decided that, well, we can like uh, get more funding and investment to do exactly that, develop an enterprise software that matches people inside companies. And that was the time also, Anna, what you mentioned uh, recently, where we met the Microsoft CEO. And that was funny because we told him that we were thinking about pivoting and creating like an internal enterprise software that is not managed by HR or managers, but... And he he immediately realized what the idea was. He ended he ended my sentence right, and he said, yeah. "Yeah, well, it's managed by people, <laughs> yeah. wow. so it's driven by people, and that's what it what it is like a talent marketplace today that is driven by employees, but not for, by managers or HR." Um, in that moment, was it like a eureka moment? Were you like? Mom, Dad, I think I think I've made it. I know, I know I've been I know I've been saying this business is going to work, and I know you didn't believe me, but like I've just I've just spoke to the Microsoft CEO, and I, we figured it out. Well, actually, Jan and I we have this feeling that we're going to change the world almost on a daily basis <laughs> because we have we always think we have the coolest ideas, of course, and like world changing things in mind. And I guess the most important thing at that time was that the shift from just the official B2C platform yeah. um, to offer it internally for the bigger companies because the impact will just be incredible. And they know, pay more like, money. Of course. <laughs> of course. They the do. business model is also really promising in that area, yeah. <laughs> of course, there was also a reason, yeah. Yeah. Um, bigger impact, a more obvious business model. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose once you get one really good case study, you're yeah. away to the races. What... What so at this stage had you raised money or mm. were you were you raising more money at the at this point? Yeah, we 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 had some minor or smaller angel investments before we moved into the Microsoft Accelerator, and at that time we were looking for funding because we knew to develop an enterprise software we need more than three people. So we were yeah. only three people back then in 2015. So we raised money uh, while uh, sitting there actually. And um, that wow. enabled us to to go that step and start with the software. This is a bit of a fluent story. Like they, like things have really worked out for you, hey? Well, actually, I think because we 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 sometimes challenged the status quo on our level because also when we it came to raise money uh, while we have been there in the program, we pitched in front of VCs. You know, classical VCs. You have just. Yeah. Uh, white man sitting in front of yeah. you and don't understand your point about changing the world and just want to know more <laughs> about the market case and the hockey sticks and the exit yeah. plans and for Jana Mir we always talked about changing the working yeah. world and that we want to start with concrete solutions so it was funny because Jana and I we were really tired and said okay so we won't, don't want our money from the, VS, uh, um, from the VCs. We will just write and find out about rich people because there are so ri many rich people out there in the world. So we just went on Wikipedia and checked the richest, list, richest people list of Germany. And with Google Earth, you can see a lot in the villages where they live with the biggest pools. And yeah. then you when you read like magazines, you know, in management. In now film. you tell all the secrets, Anna. <laughs> oh, so I shouldn't read. Yeah. Should it, that's fine. Can, okay. That's fine. That was our strategy. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> well, actually, that's how we raised 1 million euro within three months. So it was, <laughs> it was actually interesting because we wrote them letters, like handwritten letters. And we can remember that Microsoft wanted to stop us and said, God, you can't do this. You can't just write letters to investors. And we said, well, it's too late. We already wrote them and sent them. So it was incredible because many people um, answered actually like 20. The response rate was super high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because we thought no one wants to, you know, check 
boring Excel sheets or business plans. They want to see probably really nice postcards with our vision and our impact we create in the world. And actually that worked out. So we, we found our first investor giving us 1 million euro and um, we could grow and we could, yeah, employ. What, what was the moment that hit the, when that money hit the bank account? Did, like, did you feel anxious or did you feel like celebrating? <laughs> we celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that felt really, really good. I remember that we had like um, a sustainable bank at that point of time and they were not used to these amounts of money. <laughs> and they called us <laughs> and told us, is this right? Is this supposed to happen? And yes. We like, yeah, that, yes. <laughs> that was intended. So that was great because we, we could hire uh, seven more people. So we were 10 people then at that point of time. And we were able to start that software super, super, super fast within a month because we had um, two big corporate customers right from the beginning on which was really great so that gave us the possibility to start very soon and have those use cases or these reference customers you just mentioned right so like you guys have a real nice way about you and in 2015 like I, your business experience isn't that great you know and you're hiring people like wh what was that like like going from like i have an idea to no, I'm responsible for all this money, this vision, and these people that I'm bringing in. Like, what well, that, that must have been super challenging. Well, actually, it's well, when we look back now, of course, it's a feeling of wow, what mm -hmm. all happened within these years, and it was incredible, and the challenges were huge. Yeah, but. I would say, Jana, in the, these moments, it didn't feel like that, right? Because mm -hmm. we were just, we had our goal in mind and our focus and our vision, yeah. and we just moved on. So everything we did was for a purpose, a certain purpose. So we didn't think about it much. We were just trying to, well, to, to win a great team and to have fun what we do. And yeah. I think when you answer the why, um, at the beginning, why you do things, it's much easier because you can push so hard and you can, yeah, well, solve all challenges. <laughs> um, so let's fast forward to today. H how large is the company? <laughs> we are 30 people right now. So the team is not super big because we are so lucky to have a pretty scalable product. So we had to, to like grow from 10 to 30 that was necessary yeah. to deal with the the all the customers etc and grow the platform but yeah what's the what's the biggest challenge at the moment is it is it like customer success is it more sales is it innovation it, like actually it's there are many challenges on different every, every levels. day there's a different yes, challenge of course of yeah. course i mean you know, we have we are a small team our product is working very well right now and but we have huge customers like Ernst & Young, SAP, Lufthansa, so the biggest companies in Germany. Wow. And it's incredible what we created actually with such a small team in yeah. comparison to <laughs> competitors out there. I mean, sometimes uh, they don't even know that we are only 30 people. Sometimes I have to tell them because I, I, like, um, I'm leading our customer success team and I'm accompanying all those yeah. customers the big customers we have and sometimes i just have to tell them that sorry we are 30 people you have to keep <laughs> that in mind when you ask about all those uh features yeah. you, you would love to have because we are super fast i would say uh, we can really keep up with the competition but it's yeah we are still small team right <laughs> can, but, can you still do it with a small team or to meet your objections like yeah, long well, term well, actually, at the moment, it's like this, that we are named among the top vendors worldwide. So, I mean, uh, like Oracle or Word or stuff, but yeah. it's, it's great that the companies choose us at the moment and it shows us that it was our natural way of evolution, you know, because right now we are a internal talent marketplace for bigger companies and we are able to collect data no one else is, is managing to collect it. And we didn't plan that because we were so focusing on our purpose at the beginning, like sharing knowledge within companies, bringing together people for job sharing, job rotations, projects, mentoring, 
uh, you name it, whatever. So we, you name it, we match it kind of. And we were just focusing on the use cases and what's in for the people when they use our software. So user experience was very really Im 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 important for us. So it was incredible to see um, within the last years what the users typed in actually, what kind of great and special data no one else in the company could could create or no other place where they have been collected so talent the typical you know top-down organized talent management software or people analytics software are having a hard time collecting data because sometimes the user they just don't type in the data because they don't they trust are, it well they are asking themselves what's in for me and for us it was just so great that we with the focus on our use cases created such a um, enormous helpful data for the for the companies that it was was really great so it was actually data for the people not about them yeah, <laughs> yeah that was also a development that just we realized um, last year right we realized that wow we are gathering such meaningful data we should use that also to to give better KPIs to management and HR. So of course our product is developing. We have so many feature ideas. So we, yeah. we will have to grow our team this year again, like, of course. <laughs> I can imagine uh, I can imagine like from my own experience, it, whenever my wife had our children, uh, each time we had to integrate her back into the business, but it was really tough because mm -hmm. she couldn't do the same job as before, like for the first period of time. And then we got a bit more nursery, she had a bit more time and, it was tough. Something like this in a bigger company, I can imagine she's able to do a little bit and then, but she could be really impactful in the, mm -hmm. in the bit that she's excellent at. And then somebody else job shares the rest of it. Is that exactly. the type of things that it does? Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. And it, for the people, it's so great because they can stay in contact with their colleagues, even if they go you know, for a leave for yeah. a sabbatical or parental leave or whatever. So it's just great that the, we, we help to connect the people and that they can stay in close contact and that they find each other when they need each other. You know, it's about not just selling another software for companies because we're all tired of another software and another software. It's important mm -hmm. that we create software that helps the people in the end to strengthen them the people to meet people connection right in a mm -hmm. in a in a great way so i think that's the the important thing about it um, and we always find new use cases right to connect people and to connect knowledge and organizations for example with uh, during the pandemic last year um, many companies approached us and said um, that they want to staff short assignments like short challenges that come up and that have to be staffed immediately with the right people within mm -hmm. the organization so we came up with the short assignments matching and added that to our tool oh, so yeah. of course our, our tool is never it's never perfect or finished but we add new use cases all the time that help companies to to become networked organizations so you have to be really agile with yeah. uh, with the company's needs on it yeah Yes, of course. But right now we are in a stadium and that's so great after a couple of years now developing the product that actually the companies ask us and say, well, what mm -hmm. would you do? Because you are the experts and you, you know how to create the product. And obviously the users love it because it's for us when it comes to product development or, or mm -hmm. tool development, Jan and I always say, please, 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 minimum time, minimum time in tools. So for the users, because they should get right away what they want and sh shouldn't stay all day long in the tool to get, you know, um, what they need. So I think that's why it's so important right now because the company see when we want to become a network organization, we need digital helping hands like Tan Employ to achieve that. And in a natural way, because in, in, in a short term impact, of course, you create like or you achieve that people get matched faster for project mm -hmm. teams that, you know, are complementary to each other. So um, that's great, but in a, in a like middle uh, impact or mid time impact, it's like, well, you have a couple of people in their company that are really loud or they know how to um, do like self marketing. Can you yeah. say it like that? So sure. they know how to, you know, um, self promote. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. And it's interesting that with uh, like environments or our tool, you create a, 
uh, more they are more visible then you know yeah, the, it's an unbiased matching from, right yeah yeah it's not biased yeah the, that's true. And long term, of course, it's like a cultural change that when you have a problem at work, you don't go to the, your boss. You, you look probably for other people in your company or colleagues that, who can help you. Yeah. So it's so un unbiased and more, and more flat structured mm -hmm. in, in helping companies make decisions and giving people internal opportunities. Sounds really yes. good. Well, tell me a little bit about your experience with the HR tech community. If you guys uh, have you guys been to many events have you have you like what's that been like trying to integrate yourself into this world mm -hmm. well actually we have <laughs> we are super active in that yeah, yeah. <laughs> in that yeah. world ever since so um i think for jana and me it was always important especially in the german speaking market to enable the hr manager not just to complain about well we need to be you know braver or we need to have more courage to do things it's just look for digital tools that can help you to achieve your goals because it's just incredible what there's what's out there in the hr tech yeah, market it's right amazing now. right now so the hr manager should be more like you know in the driver's seat and use the tools like in a cockpit just yeah. use it whatever you need so your job will be just so much more fun in the future yeah. <laughs> And I think what, that's important, yeah. What other, uh, what other tools out there um, like jump out at you that you're like, wow, you're changing the world? <laughs> well, you, you mean not ours? Because not not yours, because we just know, talked about it for half an hour. <laughs> that's, that's, the, you know, that's the most important, you know. That's the basis. Yeah, when yeah, you we, got it, it. we got it, we got it. I think there are so so many out there when it comes to you know to organize or manage your team or when it comes to recruiting software or helping you to recruit people or find the right teams when it comes to collaboration within the company i think we could name hundreds right now but yeah. um, in the in the end it's important that you have like a landscape of software that kind of fits together and um, also uh, works and um, and that's a great thing when we work together also as, as HR tech uh, software companies it's just a greater impact we can create in the HR world yeah so those integrations are really important to you absolutely mm -hmm. that's why we we, ha we have them and work with the bigger ones also because then we are the great add-on they need because they can't fill it yeah so with that in mind you you need to be integrating with the other enterprise level softwares yeah yeah and and does your product will you will you bring it to the SME and small business world eventually, or is it just, or is that just not in the agenda? We started selling it to mid-sized companies, starting mm -hmm. from around five hundred people, because then it starts to bring like real value. Um, it's not designed for really small companies because in small companies, like 20 people, you have the overview. Uh, yeah. To be honest, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you're going back to your original idea of of bringing yeah. the talent in, in yeah uh, right yeah. then you can could use an external solution for it. yeah yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> um okay a couple of final questions um i'll give this to each of you what's the greatest lesson learned on the journey <laughs> i would say our biggest lesson was to always listen to our gut feeling okay. because our our management style i would describe it as very intuitive um and we always listen to, to our feelings and mm -hmm. hearts. <laughs> and whenever we did not do that and listen to like external advice that was against what we felt was right, we made big mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that leads me to the next question. What was the biggest mistake you've made? <laughs> not listen to our gut feeling. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, really, I mean, honestly. It was, Let's it, be specific now. Come on, <laughs> give me... Um, give me because you know we didn't have this one big mistake probably there were smaller ones on the way Jana right so and that felt like well we didn't listen to our feelings or we, for example we hired some people um yeah. senior people that we thought we we have to hire because people told us so also uh, external advisors because you need those kind of people and we had a bad feeling about that and it turned out to be not the right thing for us at that stage yeah. and of course if you do mistakes in recruiting and we are like originally from the recruiting sector that, that that was hard for us if you do mistakes in recruiting 
that costs you a lot of time and effort and yeah. money. So that's hard for it for a small team. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So that is uh, that is us today. Any final message to any young entrepreneurs out there that are in your sector that are, you know, looking at you now and going, wow, they made it. That, like, I, I want to be like them. Well, the most important thing is to tell all of you out there, you can do it. <laughs> Just listen to, to your, well, what, what you feel and do it your way. And there are so many how-to books out there. And of course you can read them, but in the end, find your own way because it's the, it's the best and the most fun way. And it's the authentic way you need in the end to have the great success. And I think that's the most important thing. And Jan and I, we always say, well, we, if you have courage and a heart and an open mind, there can't be anything or wrong, right? <laughs> and you can also found a tech startup without being a techie, right? <laughs> That's true. And especially for all the women out there that can't code by themselves. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's very important that you are in the CEO uh, position in the end and decide what kind of code your developers create. <laughs> so get in the driving seat, hey? <laughs> yeah. Good on you. Thanks so much. Really inspiring story. Great to see you doing so well. Uh, and I uh, really enjoyed the chat. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us.